We are now going to be beginning a chapter on ecology, which is this basically the study of how living organisms interact with each other and how those living organisms interact with the non-living things that are around them. Um, you'll find in a, in a section that's coming up that those are called biotic and abiotic factors. Bio means life, and so biotic therefore means things that are living, whereas abiotic, if you put the prefix a on a word, it means not, and so abiotic means things that are not alive. So we are going to break down our the world that we live in into several different components so that we can study either big chunks of it or little chunks of it at a time. And so the five words in the correct order as to how we're breaking things down we start with the word biosphere, and the biosphere really includes um, the entire earth. It includes everything um, within it, everything that is living, and everything that is not living. Uh, within the biosphere, the biosphere is then broken down into a different number of biomes. Biomes are broken down into ecosystems, uh, which are then broken down into communities, which are broken down into populations. Now, what I want to make sure that you understand here is that if I start with the biosphere, uh, the biosphere is going to contain several different biomes, like this. And so probably, I'm assuming that probably a lot of you have studied biomes before in an earlier science class. Uh, biomes include things like deserts, uh, savannas or grasslands, they include the tundra, they include the tropical rainforest. So those are biomes. And then each biome is then gonna be broken down into ecosystems. So I'm just gonna take one biome here, although they would all be done this way. And then you're gonna break your biome down into, into ecosystems. Ecosystem here. And I'm just gonna put an E here for another ecosystem. Okay, then each ecosystem from there is broken down into several different communities, like this. And then each community is going to have a number of different populations in it, like this. Okay, so let me give you an example as to what that might exactly look like. So I might start with a population. I'm now going to start at the bottom. I'm going to work my way back to the top. So a population might be um, a group of wildebeests that are living in the African savanna. So a population is going to include only one species. A species is a group of organisms that um, can interbreed with one another and when they produce they are going to produce viable offspring. Okay, so wildebeests are going to mate with wildebeests and they're going to make more wildebeests. So a population is going to be a species that interbreeds with each other, can produce viable offspring, and it's only, only that one species that we're talking about. Now, if I move up to the next level, to the community, now I have the wildebeests and the zebras and the hyenas and the lions. And so there you can kind of see if I say wildebeest and the zebras and the hyenas and the lions, and they all work together to make a community. And obviously all of those things are going to be interacting with each other. Um, the zebras might not appreciate the type of interaction they have with the lions, but they still are going to be interacting with each other. Now, when I move up to the ecosystem level, the ecosystem is now going to include um, the not only the living organisms but some of the non-living pieces the abiotic factors that are a part of that surrounding as well so I'm gonna have all of the all of the animals that I talked about I'm gonna have all of the plants that the zebras are feeding on or that anything else for that matter is feeding on it's going to include all of the bugs that are in the area it's going to include all of the bacteria that are in the area. It's going to include the soil. It's going to include the air. It's going to include the water. So basically, it's going to include everything, both living and non-living, that is a part of that area where these creatures are living. And something that's interesting about an ecosystem is that there doesn't have to be any particular set size for an ecosystem. An ecosystem is generally determined by the ecologist. If he wants to study a very, very small area and a small number of 
populations, a small number of communities, then he's going to define his ecosystem as being something quite small. Or he might make the ecosystem very, very large so that he can study a large area and how a larger number of organisms are going to be interacting with each other and with the world around them. So there is no set size for an ecosystem. It all is based on exactly how much uh, the ecologist decides he wants to study at one time. Okay, Then a whole group of ecosystems is going to go together and that's going to make a biome. So every um, section of the African savanna that we were talking about, um, every small area, when you group all of those ecosystems together, that's when you're then going to have the entire biome of the entire African savanna together. And then all of the biomes together uh, go into making our earth. Okay. Um, so the other section that you read you read, you read about producers and consumers and decomposers. And if you recall from, I think it was the, maybe the third video in the first module that we studied, I mentioned uh, producers and consumers to you already. And I lumped them in with, I said, producers are the same thing as autotrophs. And I said, consumers are the same thing as heterotrophs. And I also stuck decomposers into the heterotroph category. So these should not be terms that are brand new to you because we have talked about them before. Um, she goes into more detail about those terms here, but we've actually already discussed them. So I just wanted to point out that we have discussed those already. Um, there is another video that I've linked you to where they go into quite a bit more detail about decomposers as to what their role is in an ecosystem and actually as to how important they are in an ecosystem. So you're going to want to make sure you check out that video as well.